So I'm seeing a question that I actually talked to the fellow that's uh, during our first meeting, new, new student in the Prep and Your program the other day. Um, I answered this question for him, and it's a question that is very, very common amongst um, many of our students, many of the people we actually talk to both inside and outside of the program. And that question is whether or not someone needs to have passed the FE exam to start acquiring real engineering experience for as as a requirement for the P exam. So as we all know, we have to get we have to pass the FE exam number 1. Number 2, to take the P exam, we have to have a certain number of years of experience to actually sit and take the exam. So this is a very common question and, and I just want to uh, hopefully many of you tonight may have this question and I can just put it all to ease and and help you get more and gain more clarity around it. The short and dirty answer to this is you do not have to pass the EVP exam before you start acquiring your real life, what they call progressive engineering experience. In fact, your engineering experience starts the minute you graduate from an ABET accredited university or any university in, 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 that, in that case, any university and you obtain a job or a position working under a registered licensed professional engineer. So if on day one after graduation, you're working for under a professional engineer, your experience is already being allotted to your, against your requirement to sit for the PE exam. So theoretically, say, I'll just use California as an example. Say you want to take the exam two years after college, the FE exam two years after college, or, or let's just say you take the exam two years after the college. You didn't even know it was a requirement, but you got two years into your uh, position and you realized just how important it was going to be to have your FE exam. And more importantly, how important it was going to be to have your professional engineering license. So two years into your job, you find out, you start to research it, and uh, you're like, okay, let's prepare. So you put in your, your work, you start preparing for the FE exam, and you pass it at the two-year mark of you actually working. Well, theoretically, say April is the next exam date for the PE exam or October, whatever the next exam date is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to get your two years experience starting from that point. You can actually register and take the PE exam that same year literally that same year theoretically the next day obviously that can't happen but theoretically as soon as you pass that fe exam that's a requirement check on your pe application and the two years of experience check if you have an abet accredited degree of course is checked off your application now i say two years of experience in california if you don't have an abet accredited engineering degree but you do have an engineering degree from a non abet accredited university you then have to have four years experience um, if you don't have a degree at all, it's actually six years of experience. And that's a state-by-state state requirement. It's different per state. You'll have to check for your specific state what that would mean or be. But just to put that uh, notion to rest that you actually have to pass the FE exam before you start gaining experience, that is false, bad information being spread around the Internet. Don't listen to it. Get your grind on. Get your work experience. Get the FE exam done and get the PE exam done ASAP.